Welcome to the last talk of the day. Uh, you guys can leave. Bye. Um, thank you very much uh, for coming. I, this has been a really cool work camp. There's been a lot of really, really good sessions already today. Of course, there's more tomorrow. Um, my name is Amy Nason. I'm one of the lead developers of WordPress here from Washington, D.C. Uh, and I'd like to talk to you today a little bit about some of the dark magic that we added in WordPress 3.7. Uh, I came up with this title before I realized this was Halloween theme. So it actually works pretty well, I think. Um, I don't have a costume other than being a WordPress developer, complete with pleasure. So I just thought maybe it would work. There's a few here. Um, I want to talk a little bit today about how WordPress 3.7 leaves a lot of groundwork. Uh, I led the release of WordPress 3.7 very much an under the hood release. There's not a whole lot in there for users. In fact, uh, we didn't do a video this time because we had nothing to show them. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Uh, we the about page uh, had some had some uh, some icons on it and a fully functional password meter because we had nothing else. We didn't really have anything else to go on, uh, which is much different from the last release I led, which was 3.5, which was entirely user focused, uh, redoing all the media. So I've seen both sides. Uh, of the spectrum here, and even as cool as media was, everyone likes media in 3.5, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, this is by far my favorite WordPress release that I've worked on, uh, and the reason why is because of the possibilities of where it can take us in the future. Um, some of the things that happen is that there were a lot of processes that changed, uh, and this has been talked about a little bit today. Uh, I know uh, Kat and Eric Mann have both been poking around a lot of this stuff, where we have a whole new repository that is specifically focused on building better tools for core developers and ideally eventually for plugin theme developers as well. So we have a new grunt build task that handles things. Uh, it also caused a really awesome giant bug in 3.7, so there'll be a 3.7.1 in the next like two days. Um, but hey, you know, it's a new build process, it's cool. Uh, JavaScript unit tests, uh, we're really trying to kind of modernize the project, uh, which is pretty cool. So we hit 10 years and then it's like, all right, time to feel like we're a grown up project. Uh, we've also been working on addressing a number of bugs. Uh, in fact, a few hundred. We closed more than 400 individual tickets in 3.7 in less than three months, in about 85 days, I think, from start to finish. We had more than 200 people contribute, uh, and we had something like 1,800 individual changes in those 80-something uh, days. Quite a, lot, lot, quite a lot going on, quite a lot being closed out. Uh, some really great work, for sure. Huge effort to, to improve uh, all of the documentation for every hook in WordPress. We haven't gotten there yet. I think we're maybe about halfway there. Uh, anyone had, here has been working on that at all? There's, I know there's a few people who are working on who've been working on that here. Uh, there's a few dozen people. All they're doing is they're documenting every single hook in WordPress. So if you're a developer, you're digging in, trying to figure out how do I use this hook. Well, there's actually there's going to be something right written right there that explains what where all the parameters are coming from, when to or when to not use this hook because some hooks are way too powerful or some not powerful enough. Also, all of that will eventually be pulled into a new website, uh, developer.wordpress.org, which should be up by the end of the year. So hey, look, fully functional API documentation. It's like we're a modern project. <laughs> uh, there are some other little APIs that we snuck in. If anyone's played with advanced date queries yet, WP date query. Uh, followed, modeled a little bit after uh, taxonomy, qu uh, text queries, a little bit after meta queries. Date queries are really cool. You can do things rather. You can do things like find me all posts between two dates, find me all posts written on the first Tuesday of the month. Uh, really, whatever you want to do there. It's pretty slick. Uh, prioritize search results. You guys have probably already seen this if you looked at the about page. Also, everyone's running 3.7 right now, right? Yes. Yeah, the bugs aren't that bad, I promise. Yeah, well, you can update if you wanted to. You can hit update on, on, on those hosts as well, even though they haven't pushed it yet. Yeah. Um, the new password meter, this is, not, this, is, this is actually probably the most dark magic in the release. <laughs> Any of you guys have seen this? Um, it's the, the library, it's from Dropbox. So it's, I have to look at the keyboard for this. X, uh, uh, ZXCVBN is the name of the library. Uh, it does things like keyboard, keyboard patterns. So if you do zigzags on the keyboard, it will detect that. Uh, it had it, the the library compressed minified is 600 kilobytes. It's absolutely huge. It has a 10,000 word dictionary in it. Uh, it also has uh, Census Bureau common names. Uh, it detects years. It detects pop culture references because the dictionary is based on movie scripts. Uh, there's quite a lot going on here. 
It's really cool, and that's why we gave a cool little functional thing on the about page. Uh, starting to get a little bit of updates, the language packs is something that we also did. Uh, updating translations automatically. Now, most of you, this does not affect many of you, because I, I imagine that the vast majority of you use your websites in English, and your clients all need them only in English, certainly for the dashboard. But if you have a released plugin that someone has sent you a translation before, and then you have to update your plugin specifically to update a typo in the Swedish translation, or you are a user who needs to update their the plugin for no reason other than to get translations, that's going to be gone. Uh, we're getting to the point now where translations will be served automatically to installs on whatever installs that on whatever installs that need them for the languages that, that they need. Uh, the potential here is really big to the point where if you are running a, 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 a multi-site install where you have a bunch of users using a bunch of different languages, it can get to the point where they can choose a language to use and the files will just be downloaded directly from more of our right then and there. A uh, lot of potential here. Uh, only, I believe it's something like 5.5% uh, of the world's population uh, is English as their first language. Only about 10% of the world's population actually speaks English. Meanwhile, 60% of WordPress sites uh, use English. Uh, the potential for WordPress to go from 20% of the internet to far greater than that and it is in many ways in those other languages. A lot of really good potential here. Uh, so ideally developers only get concerned about the internationalization of things. All you're really worried about is making sure that your code is internationalized, that it can be brought into whatever language you want. But at some point you're not even going to need to worry about language files. Someone will be able to say, I'm going to translate this plugin and I'm going to translate it into Swedish because that's what I speak. And everyone else running that plugin in Swedish will automatically get those translations. Pretty cool. Um, obviously, putting control in all those teams really makes a lot of sense. Uh, why? I mean, you can't proofread these. You, have, you probably have no idea. You're not going to run them through Google Translate. Uh, of course, there are also other issues to, deal, to think about, things like uh, spam and security. Uh, of course, you don't want to accept uh, strings that obviously make no sense. Maybe they're filled with spam links, or maybe it's a, it's a potential where you're dealing with uh, someone who's just writing gibberish, basically. You have no idea, because it's quite literally in a foreign language for you. Uh, and then finally, the real, the real big one, updates. Updates shouldn't be painful. Updates should be easy. Uh, there's, a great, there's a great document on WordPress.org. You go to WordPress.org slash about slash philosophy. That spells out a lot of our philosophies. Decisions, not options. Uh, deadlines are not arbitrary. Out of the box. Uh, clean, lean, and mean. One of them is striving for simplicity. This section needs to be updated, and I absolutely love this. The section talks about how we focused on something simple for updates. Updates should just be one button, and all you need to do is click that button. Well, we've now removed that problem. We've actually made it more simple than what our original target was. The original target was just click a button, now it's actually, no, we're just going to update your site for you because we know we can, we know we can do it well. We're trying to keep your site as secure as possible. So we owe it to 20% of the internet, 20.4%, I believe it is, of the internet to keep sites secure. Not just for users. Now, the funny thing is that this uh, number is wrong. It should be 100% of the internet. Because on any given day, someone is reading a WordPress site. Someone is stumbling across a WordPress site. If every single WordPress site, is, is all it's doing is it's uh, shepherding malware because someone's using an out-of-date plugin or their server's insecure or anything like that. That affects all of you. Keeping your site updated isn't just about you, it's about obviously your visitors, your readers. Um, and so WordPress 3.7 adds background updates for security and maintenance releases. And I want to talk a little bit about how this works. So in this case, uh, when we get to 3.8, you're going to have to click the button again. But for 3.71, for 3.712, or 3.72, 3.73, whatever, however many we get up to, uh, the site will just automatically update for you. We think about 80 to 90 percent of sites are compatible with this. And so I want to talk a little bit about how WordPress update actually works. Uh, if you go right now and install WordPress 2.7, which, which was released in 2008, and click the Update Automatically button, which of course we had to rename because we now have a real automatic one. That one was fake. That was a button. Click Update Automatically in WordPress 2.7 and wait about a minute. You'll be running WordPress 2.7. It still works. 10, 11 major versions, five years later, everything just works. It's of course a big testament to backwards compatibility and everything else, but it's really important that that's how it works. Now how does that all come together? The first thing is WordPress says, hey, uh, this new update, you need to download this new version. 
So you get a little bar across the top that says WordPress 3.7 is available. Uh, please update now. On the API side, we're doing all sorts of checks. We're trying to figure out, okay, your install uh, needs this version, that's great, but is your install running a local version? Do we need to give you some languages? Or do we, are, is your install perhaps trapped on an older version of PHP, which has been a problem in the past when we get, we're at like WordPress 3.2. So we're checking there. Um, you click update now because we, WordPress work said here's the offer, please update to this. Uh, we download the package. So wordpress.org slash latest.zip is the standard one. WordPress-37.zip, whatever it might be. We take that package, we open it up, but we don't extract it to disk yet. Instead what we do is we count up all the files and we add up exactly how, how, much, uh, how much room they take up, multiply it by two and add a 10% buffer, and then we make sure that the disk actually has enough space for this. You'd think this wouldn't be a problem anymore, but it is. Now, the crazy thing is that we ran into disk full errors only about three times in uh, testing for WordPress 3.7. But that was while testing across about 10,000 sites. So if you extrapolate that out to 20, 30, 40, 50 million sites, there are a number of sites that are still running on very old servers. Uh, I tweeted something out uh, a few weeks ago where I asked, can anyone find me the crappiest host that has the least amount of space? Uh, and the record was 10 megabytes that ran PHP. So there was a few that were like, you can have like 10, five megabytes, but it's all static. And this one was 10 megabytes PHP that will not contain WordPress. WordPress requires about 15 floppy disks. Um, <laughs> so you're not gonna be able to get too far with your 10 megabytes. But we now have to check this because the worst thing that happens is that we break a site and they can't do anything and we can't do anything because there's no bytes left on. So we finally extract all files. We check to make sure that every time we extract a file that we've copied it correctly. Every single one of them. So 1,500 checks. And then we have an instructions file. There's a file in the package that gets downloaded, that gets copied over, and then it gets run. Uh, you might have seen the file before. It's in, it includes updatecore.php. This file is never run when you're running WordPress. It's never included. In fact, the version you have on disk was already run when you first updated to, the, to that version. We only do, we, we, we reach into the zip, we copy this file over, and we run it. And this is the file that has all the instructions. So the file contains a function called update core. Uh, so it copies over that file, it makes sure it copies over that file. It looks to make sure this function is there because we might have copied over an empty file that ran out of free space. <coughs> really stupid stuff that we have to check for. Uh, and now we can get to the point where we're running this function and figuring out what it does. It verifies, uh, first off, that everything downloaded fine. Uh, it's checking versions again. It's double checking that everything is good. Uh, and then it's needing to figure out what needs to be copied. So WordPress has, I don't know, 1,500 files in it or something like that. It goes through every single one of them and does a checksum, does an MD5, to see what actually needs to be copied. Even though we're doing a major release, we don't need to copy over 1,500 files if only 600 of them change. If we're able to reduce by uh, 60, 70% the number of copies that we're running, the update's gonna be faster, it's gonna be more stable. We're doing less IO, less IO operations. So we're trying to figure out, okay, which files we need to copy over? And then we're saying, wait a second, can we write to any of these? So we go through all 600 files and we say, let's see here, can I write to this one? Good, can I write to this one? Good. And then we find a few files that we can't write to, and so then we start to do really, really nasty stuff. Uh, so we say, okay, well, if we're the owner, maybe we can make sure we can write to it. So we're doing this. Mind you, we're doing this in one process. When you hit update, this is happening in that same PHP script. Uh, normally, of course, PHP might only be up for 500 milliseconds, maybe a little longer, maybe a little less. In this case, we're taking some kind of minutes. Um, so we're trying to make sure it worked, and if for some reason one of 600 files we can't copy over, we decide, you know what, this is too risky. And we don't copy over any of it. We tell the user there's a problem with file permissions, you should probably talk to the, you should probably go take a look at the WordPress support forums, talk to your web host, go harass your friendly developer around the corner, whatever it might be. Something went wrong, we can't do this. Then we enter maintenance mode. You might have seen this before during updates. It says, you know, uh, enabling maintenance mode, disabling maintenance mode. This just blocks anything else from hitting the site for a brief time. Uh, when we were testing it, sites were on maintenance mode for an average of only about three or four seconds. It's pretty good, because then we're able to do a lot of other things inside that window. Now, now we get into the danger zone. Anything, once we hit this point, anything after this will break. It will break a site. So if we fail at any point before here, 
Download failed, we unzip the package and something's wrong with it, files aren't writable, uh, we, you know, whatever, we can't break a site yet. The moment we start copying files, we better copy them all because otherwise we're gonna have a problem. So after we copy them all, we do another set of MD5s across every single file that we try to copy. Because even though we did a copy operation and even though we checked the result of that copy operation, because you know PHP functions are supposed to return a true or false result for this, uh, we don't trust it. And we say, mm, maybe the file didn't completely copy. So we sometimes have this problem where we down where we copy a file over and only halfway. So we're like, okay, that's a problem. Let's just double check. So we do this, and then we copy that file one more time. Uh, and if it failed, we try it one final time as well. So at this point, we've now tried to copy the same file four times. We've already checked whether it's writable twice. Uh, we've already done MD5s on it twice. Uh, and at this point, if we have a problem, what we're going to do is we're going to call this a critical failure. Something went really, really wrong. We did every pre-flight check we could possibly do, uh, and we had a critical failure. Now, what could have happened here? It could be uh, an intermittent issue with I.O., uh, with input-output. Something could be going wrong with that server at that time. It's completely overloaded. The CPU starts just falling. It's so far behind uh, that it's unable to process things. But we're normally doing these checks a few seconds apart. It's not like we're doing them immediately. We're waiting a little bit. So chances are it's not something that's intermittent because we've tried, I don't know, six or seven times to get this right. So something went wrong. Now, it turns out um, we actually don't know what causes the critical failure because we've yet to have one. Uh, during WordPress 3.7 development, uh, beta and RC, there were 100 and, there we go, 112,000 updates, update attempts. Uh, uh, some of those ended uh, not in critical failure, but in failure. We weren't able to download things, something went wrong. But not a single one, not one, actually got to the point where, oh crap, we couldn't copy one of like 800 files we tried to copy. So, I mean, even like your file system sometimes says something went wrong when we're copying this over. Like you're on your hard drive locally. We're doing things on the fly in a PHP process where we're updating the files that we just executed. The moment this script ends, we are screwed. We have no other options. The files have changed. We, when we re-include the files, they're different. Uh, so there were failures, but we were able to obviously fail early. So we were at the point where about 98.8% of all attempts were successful. Those 1.2% of attempts, we failed early. Download failed, whatever it might be, which could be a network issue. Uh, and then 0% of attempts failed critically. That is the best 0% I've ever seen. <laughs> Uh, the vast majority of this work uh, was done by uh, one of the other WordPress core developers, Dion Pulse, who is brilliant. He also wrote the original update code back in 2.7, wrote the plugin installer code in 2.8, plugin updater code, theme update. He's written all of this. Uh, the HTTP API, if your developers used any of that, he's touched pretty much all of these areas. Uh, and this is in many ways like a pinnacle achievement for WordPress, I think. Um, now, I talked about how the automatic updater is kind of cool and that it does a lot of, a lot of cool stuff, and obviously it's doing quite a bit. I mean, self-updating PHP applications. I, I, there were so many snarky tweets, especially from other PHP developers, of like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. I'm like, no, it's a terrible idea. It's an absolutely terrible idea. But this is what we have to do. This is our only choice. The only way we're gonna be able to keep all, every site that we can up to date. Um, but we've also been able to learn from that. As I was saying, 2.7, we're now 11 major releases of updates. We've gotten really good at it. We've gotten really good at not breaking things. Uh, some of us have gotten really good at breaking things. But, you know. um, so if the site does fail, we do a few other little things here. Some of the smart aspects of this. Uh, if, let's say, we have a transient failure, we try and download the zip and it just doesn't work. Uh, instead of waiting 12 hours, which is how often the automatic updater does, uh, it doesn't even alert you that things fail, that it just tries again in an hour. If that one fails, then it says, okay, we have a bigger problem. Nason didn't take down WordPress.org, but the network isn't clogged. Something isn't working. We're going to email you and tell you that you should probably go push the update now button. Uh, others, though, if we are dealing with a critical failure, we're waiting until you click update now before clearing that flag. So we're just not even going to try and do an automatic update. We're not going to risk that. We're not gonna risk getting to the point where we just every single time there's a new release, we try and update your site and it breaks. And then you have to go in and fix it. 
that's not fun. We're going to wait until we know that this can work successfully. It also automatically avoids messing with sites with version control. A lot of you, I'm sure, use custom deployment. Uh, if you do, you probably use a constant pixel out file mods, especially if you're doing things across multiple servers. That way, an administrator can't just hit update somewhere. Uh, but if you're using something like version control, if you're using Subversion, Git, Mercurial, Bazaar, you don't support CVS, sorry. Um, I'm kidding. We actually do support CVS, but not here, in somewhere else in WordPress 4. It's, this is some really weird word code in WordPress 4. I'm just going to let you guys know. Um, so we avoid messing with version control automatically. We just say, you know what? We've detected that there's, that there's something here, we're good. However, uh, a lot of people came to us and were like, well, wait a second, but WordPress is a sub-module or an external, and it's like two levels inside my install. How are you going to know that, there's, that, you, you're using, that you're using version control? And I was like, well, simple. It checks the entire hard drive for version control. Uh, so if you're running uh, var slash www slash public HTML slash WordPress, and that slash WordPress is where WordPress is, and let's say public HTML is your directory, it'll look up to that. If you are insane and are somehow running your entire hard drive off of version control, it's going to look for slash dot git or slash dot svn. It's going to go all the way up the chain. Uh, at which point everyone's like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. You guys did think of everything. Well, maybe not everything, but certainly we're making people feel a lot more confident just by being able to explain, actually, no, relax, your site's fine. We're not even going to try and do anything. Um, we're also trying to make WordPress a heck of a lot more secure in this manner as well. So not only are these updates far more reliable and more stable, but everything is now happening over SSL. If we can't communicate over SSL to WordPress.org to be able to do an API call, uh, or to be able to uh, download the package, we don't do anything at all. Uh, and this is another one of those weird things where, as far as we know, something like 99% and 99 or more of all installs have OpenSSL compiled. Uh, unfortunately, we're finding out that one of the newest versions of curl completely breaks this. So we have all their issues. Uh, but again, we've been trying to work around all of these, and we're trying to make it so your site, if your site can securely update, great, do it. Otherwise, you, we're going to let you push the button. I don't want to risk that. We're also now collecting better data points based on how well we fail or how well we succeed. So every time there's a background update on a site, or every time update now is clicked and it has to go to WordPress.org and request the API, it then does another API request at the end to refresh all of the data. And in the process, it sends back some really, really basic statistics. If there's a failure, it sends back the error code, which we wrote. Uh, there's about 30-something error code that can occur over the course uh, of an update. I only touched on about 12 of them, uh, just to give you an idea of the breadth of this. It also sends back little things like what transport was used. Did it use FTP or did it use direct transport? How much time was taken? I now know that it takes somewhere between 24 and 25 seconds to compute an update now. Uh, that's really important information for us. So now we're like, oh, maybe we don't worry about time as much as stability. Or maybe these error codes are where we need to be focusing because something's going on here. We had a lot of major critical failures early on that we were able to completely change because we started implementing earlier and earlier checks for certain things that we knew we were able to predict. Uh, and then WordPress.org can slowly roll out update instructions. Uh, this is pretty cool because someone said, well, you know, what happens if you guys just have release something bad? I'm like, okay, that absolutely could happen. Uh, but when we release WordPress 371, uh, we're not going to push it auto update right away. We're going to wait a few hours, see if any bugs came back, see if there have been a few hundred thousand installs that have already gone ahead and update manually. Uh, and then we're going to roll it out to 1% of all installs. And we're going to make sure that there's nothing crazy in our statistics. And then we'll roll it out to 5% of installs. And then mine as well, because you know, one might set to be updated. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, and then at some point we're going to say, all right, let's just release the floodgates, 100% of all installs, go ahead, update. Um, there's other forms of rolling, in this case, rolling back. Uh, we do this. If we receive a critical failure, which we haven't yet, WordPress will do the entire update process, they'll walk through all of this again, in reverse, back to the old version. So if the update to 371 failed and something is really finicky, what we'll do is we'll roll the whole thing back. Now this is good, if you have one particular file that can't be updated, but you're running, let's say, WordPress 3.7, we're able to run and roll you back to that because that file is exactly what it should be for 3.7. So we can take you back to that version, 
put you there and say, don't worry, you're going to be okay. Uh, and at that point, a critical failure now just becomes, ah, we couldn't quite update. We're not going to let you know it took us like three minutes to figure out that we couldn't do that. But we couldn't update, go try it yourself. If you need anything, talk to the, uh, try and visit the WordPress support forums, contact your web host, things like that. This is, there's a lot of potential here for sure. Users also receive a follow-up email. When WordPress 3, when 371 comes out uh, and your site gets updated, it will say, hey, congratulations, your site's been updated. If we were unable to for some reason, we're gonna say, hey, we tried, but we weren't able to. It's a critical failure, you should read the email back, it's actually kind of funny. We're like, we're sorry, but it's really important. Um, so, and we actually haven't sent any of those emails yet, so that's good. Uh, and then if for some reason you haven't updated or you're unable to update at all, automatic updates just don't work, uh, we will send an email and just let you know, hey, by the way, WordPress 371 is available. But we're gonna wait a few days to send out those emails, that way we give the chance for installs to catch up and whatnot. The security issue, we can of course speed that up. But WordPress.org carries quite a lot of control here. There's a lot of flags that it can set to specifically tell certain install uh, specific installs to do one thing or do the other thing based on what is absolutely best for that install. Uh, it also allows things like security updates for older branches. Uh, someone found out, and there was a, a contributor who found out about this yesterday, and they're like, wow, that's cool. Uh, the way it works is that, let's say, the current version is 3.8.2, we just released that, it's a security issue, and you're running 3.7.3, we can release a 3.7.4 and tell your install to update the 3.7.4, and let them know there's a 3.8.2, because ideally you should go update to that. Now, you're not gonna be able to update the 3.7.4, but your install will be able to, if it can, of course, uh, and try and keep it secure. So one of the things that this does is it changes the game in terms of how we're doing maintenance releases and how we're doing security releases. You're gonna to start to see us backporting more and more and actually releasing older packages of WordPress just to make sure that we can push those out to sites. Uh, we're not necessarily exposing that in terms of, hey, you can just be secure by updating this instead of updating the latest. But we are trying to make sure that we can do whatever is best for the web to keep, old, to keep older versions of WordPress secure. Uh, and of course, every time you release a new version, we get an a new opportunity to email them and let them know that they should really update. Uh, so, hey, you updated to 3.75, please update to 3.82. Hey, you updated to 3.76, please update to 3.9. Hey, you updated to 3, and then we get to the point where it's, it, we're, we're, you know, they're now getting blasted with email every few months for a new release. Maintenance releases also mean that we don't really need to wait as long because there's no more update fatigue. I always get this, it seems like WordPress is updating once a month. Well now WordPress will only be updating ideally two, two to three to maybe four times a year, only for major versions. You'll get those maintenance fixes right there for you. So we would normally never consider releasing 3.7.1 so quickly, but we have about five or six major bugs that we're looking at. We've already been working on fixing them. And we think, you know what, let's just get this out now. It's only been four days, but that's okay. These sites need these fixes. Most people won't even need to worry about it. Uh, we normally, we used to have a, a rule of thumb that if we went four weeks, before we did a point one, we did great. If we went six weeks, uh, we forgot about it because the release was so stable. If we went only two weeks, then something went wrong. That was our original rule of thumb. We're completely discarding that now because we can get away with it. I just realized everyone's up there as well. <laughs> I was at work camp in Europe earlier this month. It was a, it was a giant concert hall uh, in, in, uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, purple seats, very weird. But they had balconies uh, up there and it was, it was like very intimidating standing up on stage with like tons of people sitting up on top of you. Um, so security updates in all the branches, really cool, yay, fun. It also handles plugins and themes. All of this code handles translations, it handles core, it handles plugins and themes. If you want to tell all of your plugins and all of your themes to automatically update to the latest, you can. Now, we're not necessarily there yet on a perspective of is that a good idea or will you break your site? Obviously, the more, the more people you give access to updating your site, the, the more possibility things will break. We can potentially make that better over time. But right now, these are kind of like snuck in there as, hey, look, you can play around with this if you're really interested. Um, it can also be used by a security team to update malicious plugins. So if we get to the point where, let's say there is a really terribly insecure version of a plugin, uh, we could potentially offer to every single install if you're running the latest version of this plugin, so that means you're keeping it updated, update to that point one that fixes the security vulnerabilities. Uh, and the benefit there is that we, we could, it, this isn't in the plugin author's hands, this is in the security team's hands. 
So we can write the fix plug and over if we wanted to. We can confirm, yes, this absolutely fixes it. It's a major vulnerability. This is a backdoor on installs. Uh, please, please, please update. And we'll tell every install possible, please update this plugin. It's incredibly important. Uh, if there's a situation where a plugin author is password or their account is compromised and a malicious version of that plugin is released, we could potentially instruct installs to work backwards from that and be able to go back to a previous version that we know that worked. A lot of potential here for sure. It also handles major releases if you wanted to. If you want to tell it to update WordPress core, uh, if you can just define a constant, WP auto update core true. And it will just update everything. It'll keep it updated for you. It'll go to 38, 39, 40, 41, whatever it is you want. Any secure release, anything else like that. It'll keep the old latest. Uh, it's not far enough. I think we need to definitely go a lot further from where we are right now. Um, we need to detect the compatibilities. We have some really great statistics on WordPress.org as to whether a plugin works or doesn't work. We also know what plugins run with other with which other plugins on different sites. Plugin A and plugin D run together just as we can we think just fine. They're activated on 3,000 sites. Those two plugins are compatible. We can start to look at an install and basically use crowdsourcing to figure out, actually, the plugins you're running, you should be OK. Uh, we can get to the point where maybe if you're running the WordPress beta tester plugin, we start sending back specific data of, hey, I've been testing these plugins that are active on my 3.8 beta site. These plugins are good to go for the next version. Uh, maybe get to the point where you're able to rate and 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 uh, review plugins directly from the dashboard. Uh, and then also, if we broke a site, can we check to see if we white white screen the site, or check to see if maybe we only generated a warning on the site, and maybe try and figure out how we can fix that. Uh, and in 3.8, 3.9, and beyond, we're really starting to move forward very very quickly. Uh, we have been moving quickly for quite a while now. Uh, three, only three years ago, custom post types and multi-site. Uh, and now that's the subject of half of all WordPress talks, it seems like. Uh, those are some pretty big things, and those were not that long ago. Um, and we're continuing to move at a rapid pace. We're starting to post more and more roadmaps. So if you want to follow along, you certainly can. Uh, and ultimately, it means that we're finally maturing as a project. Uh, Self-updating is a huge responsibility. It's a huge responsibility for WordPress. Uh, we, we owe it to the internet. The WordPress core team, security team, owes it to the users. Um, incredibly dangerous, obviously. There's a lot of things that can go wrong here. And we feel that we've gotten to the point where this really makes sense, and this is what we need to be doing. Uh, and I humbly think that there's never been a more exciting time to contribute. WordPress 3.8 is kicking off this week. Uh, there, there are already three or four, maybe five features that are already ready to go. We're going to start merging them in as early as tomorrow and, and, and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, and 3.8 will be out in December. 3.9 will probably be out in quarter one, maybe quarter two for 4.0, quarter three for 4.1. Really quick, really rapid, but a ton of stuff in every single release. Uh, and this is the tagline when you update the see me about page. Thank you for updating to WordPress 3.7. You might not notice a thing, and we're okay with that. change after an update, it's almost always widgets that have disappeared, and that was true for 3.7. Uh, my search widgets were gone, and custom taxonomies were gone. I mean, I did have, you expect that? I have never heard of widget disappearing, so I imagine that maybe the one constant might not be WordPress, but your theme, or a particular maybe. plugin on your site. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I mean, obviously it happens, but it's, I, we don't get like a bargain for daily that your widgets so I'm assuming that there's probably something very particular in your site that causes that. Um, but one big thing about automatic updates in particular is don't compare it to the update from 3.6.1 to 3.7. Compare it to the, for the update from like 3.6 to 3.6.1. These minor releases, there's very little changing. They're going through uh, four different levels of review, multiple lead developers, of which there are only five, are signing off on every single one of these patches. Um, so you're not going to have any, any problem in terms of stability. I really don't know. I mean, maybe John can look at your site. I, I noticed that the, like the default search widget that you know is built in WordPress, 
used to be coded with um, IDs, and in 3.7 they changed to classes. Yep. And the reason is because uh, it actually keeps IDs for the first widget, and it uses classes for the second, third, fourth widgets. The main problem is that widgets are multi-instance, so you can have multiple widgets on the page. Sure. So the issue there was you were, we were generating invalid HTML, and it really wasn't very nice if you wanted to have multiple widgets on the page. So that's why we did that. Um, so it's potential that styling, for example, could break. Um, right. But that's not the only thing that I've seen, for sure. Okay. Yeah, in the back. Uh, are we on? Yeah. Uh, yesterday I was told that 3.7 will detect if it's in a version controlled environment and will not auto update. Right. Okay. So that's confirmed? Yep. All right, cool. That was Kato. Kato, you were right. <laughs> He's up there. <laughs> I was going to say your name first, but. Hi, you talked about um, um, being able to detect malicious scripts. Um, one of the biggest things that happened to WordPress was the Tim Thumb script. Sure. Is the new um, uh, ability to update, is that going to address something like that? Um, will you be able to go into a theme and detect those vulnerabilities or not? So it certainly is possible. One thing we could have done is we could have worked to, let's say, push a new release for every one of those themes and then instructed every install to update all of those themes. Or what we could have done, and that's dangerous too because I don't want to start changing people's customized themes. Uh, or what we could have done is we could have released a new version of WordPress that has all these really cool instructions. And we could have said, loop through the entire themes directory, find any Tim Thumb file, and fix them. Uh, that's something that Ballpress was doing. For example, uh, Tool from Automatic did exactly that. Uh, the fact that WordPress now, we're not dealing with like an update button, we're dealing with something that we can just kind of release and keep moving really quickly. Uh, it really opens up the possibilities to be able to fix a lot of those things. And this, Tim Thumb is by no means the only arbitrary code execution vulnerability that we've seen, and I would absolutely love to be able to immediately squash them very, very quickly. Is there an ability to set update windows uh, so for a certain time of day, you know, after hours, uh, or can that be done with plugin hooks by plugin developers, or is that so a create thing? The way automatic updates work is it schedules an event for 12 hours apart. The best 12 hour window that we could possibly choose was 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Uh, 8 a.m. is a little too close to the work day. Uh, 6 p.m. is a little too close to the work day. So 7 and 7 is when sites will update by default in the time zone of whatever your site is. So we're trying to, I mean, if you're a blogger who likes to blog at 7 p.m. every day, it's the potential that your site will be updating while you work, but there's really no harm in that either. So you'll get an email when it's done. Uh, so you'll either wake up in the morning or you'll come home from work and it'll say, congratulations, you're now updated to WordPress 3.7.1. So definitely not a bad thing. Um, taxonomy meta. I was, I was wondering uh, if that's, <laughs> That's been put into the roadmap yet, and uh, where? Yes. Uh, if you go to make.wordpress.org slash core okay. slash tag slash taxonomy. I know it's confusing, the name of the tag is taxonomy. <laughs> uh, there's a post, uh, I don't remember the exact title of the post, I believe it was potential roadmap for taxonomy meta and post relationships. So it was a very long post that described exactly how we're going to do that over a series of, I think, three or four releases. Right, Are, is that solidified? Uh, it's as solidified as it is, considering there's no code written yet. Okay. As we start to work on that, as we start to fix all the different blockers that prevent us from doing that. Uh, but what we're doing is we are, let's see here, we're dropping a table, we're adding a table, we're adding a major column to another table, and we're doing it without breaking any existing queries. Right. So, yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we came up with two ways to do it in a backwards compatible way. So one thing I really love about backwards compatibility in WordPress is that it by no means restricts us. It forces us to think more critically, and it allows us to prevent, we don't abandon users that way. Uh, there are a lot of other software projects that like to use their major versions to just rewrite WordPress all the time. Or not rewrite WordPress, they like to, you know, they, they, they will refactor a major API every three years when they release a new version. Uh, one of the best things about WordPress is you're not adopting WordPress 3.7, or WordPress 3, whatever it might be, you're adopting WordPress. Once you land on it, you're able to stay there, which is why we're able to do things like updates. Uh, and so, we're doing this in a backwards compatible, a backwards compatible manner um, that's, I think, pretty incredible. Uh, I would take a look at the roadmap, it's really cool. Uh, it, 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 it uses uh, MySQL views and rewriting queries on the fly to join tables to them. 
themselves to make it think like it's two different tables. So, yeah, it's kind of fun. Yeah, have one over here. Yeah. Two, two questions. Sure. Uh, is there a manual override for the auto updates in the config file? Uh, yeah. Yes. If you look on uh, make.wordpress.org slash core, uh, you can go to the 37 tag, or it's one of the more recent posts. There's a post called The Definitive Guide to Disabling WordPress Auto Updates in 3.7. Uh, I wrote it yesterday. And it describes all of the different ways to do it, in part to tell people not to do it certain ways that are more, you know, like don't delete the file because we need that, or don't disable the whole thing because then you won't get translations or you might not get, let's say, malicious plugins and things like that. Uh, but you know, there are there are a lot of fine-grained flags, both filters and constants, to do pretty much anything you want. And the, the other question is, for multi-site installs, does the new update automatically upgrade all of the sites in the network, or is that still a manual process where you have to go in and... It's currently still a manual process, but all that is is that just a simple database upgrade. Usually all it does is it just flushes rewrite rules or something like that, and WordPress is designed to work on a newer code base with a database that hasn't been upgraded yet. It's designed to work like that. So you still have to go through and click update network, but as you visit each dashboard for each site, it will automatically update that site anyway. Kind of like a hidden little thing in WordPress and that will take care of that for you. So it's not there yet, it may be in the future. It, take, it could take a while depending on the size of the network. Uh, it's, you know, it's, that's quite a lot of processing and we don't want to do it all at once. So we try processing the database updates for maybe 8,000 sites all at once. The database server is not going to be very happy. Um, so that's kind of what we're doing there, we're, we're throttling that. But WordPress is perfectly safe if, if you don't click that right away. Questions over here? Yeah. Hi, Drew. My question is how you guys um, do, do the auto update from a technical point of view. So for example, does it work like this that a user goes on the site and some kind of script checks if there is an update on the servers? Uh, the way it works is that uh, every 12 hours WordPress does a version check. It also does a plugin and an update check for themes. Uh, and what it'll just do is it'll very simply try and figure out if there are any updated plugins, themes, or core. Uh, if there is, great, it stores that in a transient. Uh, so it stores that locally to the site. And then also every 12 hours at a slightly different schedule, it will check to see, are there any updates that we should be processing? Uh, and if so, then it kicks out. So that happens on Cron, which does work based on visits. Uh, there are other ways it can work as well, but basically if you can schedule a post and it works, then this will work. Chris? Uh, so I'm just wondering how you actually, oh, here we go. I just wonder how you actually go about getting your sample for that first 1%. Sample for the first 1%. Oh, this is actually kind of interesting. So uh, every update check that gets reported back, of course, includes some details about the site, so we actually know what the heck is going on. We don't, you know, send back your, you know, anything that's private or anything like that, but we do need to know, like, URL, for example, so we can link that up with different checks. Uh, so what we do is that we MD5 the URL, and that's what we store, uh, but we also can MD5 the URL and look at the first two characters. So the first two, is so MD5 is 16, so 16 times 16 was at 256. So we can just say if the first two letters are A, if the first two characters are AA, then one under every 256 sites will automatically get that response every single time. This is because the one thing you don't want is you don't want a site to check and it says you have an auto update and then it checks again and it says no you don't. Um, so we can't do like random sampling. Um, but yeah, we do have a way to do that constantly just based on sampling like that. So base 16 is always fun. Hi. Hi John. How are you? James Jacoby. How are you? Um, so my question follows Chris's is the information that we're collecting, mm -hmm. where does that go? And is that public and will it be? Uh, a lot of the data that gets collected there is public. All we do is we collect uh, pretty much just in the aggregate. So there's a number of different things that get sent back. For example, uh, this browse happy. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen this. Uh, I think, I don't know if Brennan actually touched on this in his talk, but uh, browse happy, uh, if you've ever seen the dashboard widget, open up like IE7 and go to the dashboard, it'll warn you, it'll say, hey, you're running an insecure browser. Uh, or you're running an out of date browser, depending on the exact version. And what we actually end up doing is we track all the individual user agents that we get back and we aggregate that. So we actually know what IE6 usage looks like in the admin, or what IE7 usage looks like in the admin. So when we, so even though we're using this to try and keep people safe, we're also able to use these aggregate pieces of data so we can make determinations as to whether the new dashboard UI in 3.8 should even support IE7. Uh, so, uh, so a lot of the other stats are used, are public, are, are used publicly, PHP, MySQL, WordPress, uh, API stats, things like that. 
Uh, now that we're collecting a lot more auto update stats, we're going to definitely put a page out for all of that as well. Um, a lot of the stuff that we're doing is normally directly querying the database table to try and get different kinds of, you know, different kinds of things going back and forth. Um, it's not because we don't want to; it's that maybe we just don't have the bandwidth to be able to, you know, build an entire UI or querying all sorts of data or things like that. But it's definitely something that we want to do. Um, yeah, we have a lot of stats. Stuff. If you're inter if you're really interested in not big data, but a lot of data and stats and things of that nature, and you have a lot of experience in processing things like that, come talk to me, because the WordPress form setup is kind of really cool, and it's a lot of really cool data, and it furthers the open web. So, yeah. Emma. Yes, say that I'm working on a team with a couple other developers, and we go to launch a site, and we have version control on our theme, and someone accidentally uploads one of those files. Is there a way to tell that in WordPress, or will we just kind of realize later on, oh, this site's not being updated, and then go check. FGP. So the way it works is that if it's trying to update WordPress core, it will check specifically if where WordPress is sitting is a, oh no, I guess it would catch that, wouldn't it? Hmm. Uh, if you update a theme file, yes, that would be the problem. Uh, there is a plugin called Background Update Tester. It was released about four hours ago. Uh, and it goes through all of the different checks. It has like 17 or 18 different checks, and it will tell you specifically what version control directory it found. Um, that said, if you have a version control directory in a theme, and core wants to be updated, it's only looking at core and, and up, so up to the top. So it's not going to notice inside WP content theme slash your special theme that there's a dot git directory. Just to let, just let you know. But that said, that theme will obviously not update automatically, which makes sense because it's your own theme. So there are a lot of really good pieces of potential there, but it's, WordPress is designed to be updated in very compartmentalized ways. So yeah, you'll actually be fine. But there is that plugin, Background Update Tester, uh, that will try and explain why, why sites aren't updated. Where's the other mic? Any other questions? Updates, 3.7, 3.8. Uh, in Matt's talk at, uh, I don't know, I think it was San Francisco, uh, he talked about the evolution of WordPress into a platform. Uh, is there anything specific that you can share about that? Sure. Um, WordPress is a platform. Uh, I actually really love this. Uh, I think it's kind of a fun little marketing speak, but ultimately, ultimately the best thing about this is that WordPress is a, an amazing platform for it. If you're doing something that is not content driven or content focused, it might not be the best platform for you, and that's okay. Uh, we're not trying to build, at the moment at least, a generic framework for absolutely everything you possibly want to write on the web, um, or that you might want to write. Uh, we're not running a desktop app over here or anything like that. But the, the possibilities that you can do with a content focused application uh, in WordPress is incredible. Uh, every day, people are constantly saying, look, I built this really cool thing, and I look at it and say, really, that you did that in WordPress? I would never have, oh, this is cool. So like, we kind of, we see that a lot. Um, you know, a lot of news organizations now are using it not to power their blogs, but their full sites. And then they're also now starting to use that to power all of their interactives. Um, the Washington Post uh, use it to power all of their election results on election night. Uh, they use it to power their election results. They use it to power this giant grid of social media stuff that was flying in at rapid speed. 80% of all of their page views on election night was powered through WordPress. Um, so there's a lot of potential there. It's also, of course, a very good rapid development platform for quite a lot of what you want to do. Uh, the New York Times employs somewhere around 100, and, 100 to 150 developers, I think. Three of them are on the WordPress team, and that's 50% of their traffic. Just to give you an idea. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, as, I mean, I'm sure that Jake or Eric or a few others might have more questions to harass me about on that line of questioning, but I really like where WordPress is headed. I think we have a lot of potential to build out. I think it's funny, I look at WordPress and I see all the different areas of code that I hate. Um, if, I, if I thought it was perfect, I would not be standing up here right now. I'd be doing something else. Uh, and I mean, I think a lot of lead developers have a long-term plan, at the very least in their heads, if not in many cases now written down on, on different roadmaps of where we want to go with pretty much every area of core over the next two or three years. Ask me that question again in four years, I don't think you'll need to. Yeah.
there's instances where I've run into sites that have uh, customized uh, themes, um, but they've customized a theme that is publicly uh, done and not done it right with the child theme. Um, is there any thought of maybe in an update process checking the current version of what the theme should be to see if there's uh, differences in files before doing an upgrade? Yes, there's been a lot of work on this. Uh, there's a really great plugin uh, that was written in uh, Google Summer of Code this summer uh, that did dealt with theme revisions. So specifically, when you modified a theme, it stored uh, the modifications in a custom post type. So you're able to track over time. It uses the new revisions browser 3.6 uh, to be able to track actual change, like basically just doing a diff of the theme. That, of course, is beneficial not just for all the diffs and some of the more power tools, like almost turning, it's almost like it's turning the file editor into an IDE. Um, but it also did some things like track file changes. So it will look, hey, this is the file I thought it was, this is the file that it is now, it must have been updated through FTP, let me save a revision. Uh, the benefit there is that we can then start to see how, when was the last time a file got modified, and then that could potentially be a really good outlet into that. Uh, we also have the opportunities, now we're starting to experiment more and more with checksums. So dealing with MD5s of entire versions. So I think one of the next steps there is starting to MD5 plugins and themes only copying over the files and deleting the files we need rather than wiping them out and doing it over again. Uh, and if a file is changed, in Core's case, we forcibly copy it over because we, we want to do that. In a theme's case, maybe we say, wait a second, this is modified, let's not do it. At the same time, may, we, we would probably want to block the update entirely because uh, we would at this point, we wouldn't want to modi modify anything else because we, we risk breaking things. Um, and speaking of that, one of the cool things that with um, the way we approach maintenance releases, it's so exacting to the point where we test things as, let's say, eight files change. Any one or more of those files should be able to not update and the site shouldn't fail there. So we deliberately don't add a function in one file and use it in another file in a minor release. But the last thing we want is for one of those files to not copy and suddenly we have fatal errors. So like some of those, some of those exacting steps that we take could also be applied, some of the lessons from there could also be applied to the What is the one thing that you personally, big or small, want to change in WordPress? Uh, there are so many, I do not have enough time. Uh, hand me a beer at the after party and I will give you the whole list. But, um, multi-site, um, in particular, the code base is still terrible. Uh, it's just bad, it's absolutely bad. Um, there's so many things wrong with it. And one of the one of the things about multi-site though that isn't bad, but it's just more of an older paradigm, is that it is based on the idea of an open registration model. It is based on the idea that someone goes to a site and creates a, and like registers, I want a new site on WordPress.com, which is what it was originally built for. Uh, that's not what people are using multi-site for anymore. They're using it in many cases for closed controlled networks. So they want to be able to trust their administrators to do more things. They don't need tools for combating administrators with their spammers, they would rather trust them. And so these untrusted versus trusted networks, that paradigm, we need to very clearly draw a line in the sand because right now, we, there are a lot of things we want to do on site that we can't because this paradigm doesn't exist yet. Because we're like, well, we can't do that because we can't trust that administrator. So I, what I want to do is I want to make it so when you're setting up a network, you have to choose, is this a trusted network or is this not a trusted network? Is this an open record network or a trusted network? And if it's trusted, there are a lot of other things that we can kind of there's a lot of dead weight in multi-site that we can shed. We don't need to load at that point. Uh, and then the benefit there would be that, uh, I don't know if we'll get to the point where you want, want to spin up multi-site for your cat, but um, there are some situations where uh, we, can, we can just make it a lot smoother. And also, multi-site will then begin to look more and more like single site. In terms of, there's a lot of really weird things. I was, when I first got involved with WordPress, I was working at a, at a student newspaper in college. And the current version of WordPress was like 2.1, and the current version of Mew was like 1.4. This is before the numbers synced up. And you open, and I installed Mew because like, oh, we have three blogs. We should totally use WordPress Mew. It's designed for this. And you open it up, and you're like, what the heck did they use it? Like, it's it with an ugly stick, and like everything is messed up, and it has this giant screen for options that makes no like. Yes, I will go in and edit the database in a, in a UI. Like, it doesn't make any sense. It's like, it was like. It's, like, it's not WordPress Mew as much as like WordPress page alignment. Like it doesn't really make sense. <laughs> so, and that was back then. And I don't know how much better it is now. There are certain things. That, I mean, the network domain is, is is a great step in the right direction. But I think it's been a few years since we've done a lot of multi-site stuff. 
follow along definitely with some things like Jeremy Pelt, who's been working on this. He's now working at, I'm gonna screw this up, Washington State University, I think that's where he is now. Someone correct me, maybe not. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, where he's building out WordPress for all of their colleges and all of their uh, departments and whatnot. So there, he's using multi-site, he's using multiple networks, he's doing all sorts of domain mapping stuff, things like that. So he's definitely, I think, gonna be public leading quite a lot of the charge over the next few, um, over the next few releases to push a lot more of this into core. There was some really cool random little things that made it into multi-site this time, but honestly, almost all of it's still cleanup because it's just, there's so much potential there, but yet there's just so much like, there. So, you got way more out of the answer than you did. <laughs> Any other questions? No, top? No? All right. Guys, thank you very much. Really appreciate it.